The Ministry of Finance and the Public Service presents Let's Talk Finance, a feature exploring the various elements of the economic program. Welcome again to Let's Talk Finance here on Nationwide 90 FM. My name is George Davis. So good to be back in this slot. This is the post-budget period, at least where the debate is concerned. And we are moving to some related matters concerning the work of the Ministry of Finance and the Public Service. My guest today is Arrington Roberts. He's a man, an executive member of the Jamaica Civil Service Association, the JCSA. He's also the representative of the JCSA, where the employees at the Ministry of Finance and the Public Service are concerned. And he wears a few other hats that I let him tell you about. Morning, Arrington. Morning. How are you doing, sir? It is well with me. Good to be here with you. Has anyone ever told you that you have the perfect voice for radio? Well, I've heard that in other forums, you know. I've heard that in other forums. Yeah. And uh, thank you for recognizing that, too. There you go. You know, classic Ed Barnes, deep, rich baritone, yeah? There you go. Thank All you, right. Sir. Tell me, where the JCSA is concerned, your specific role? Okay. I'm the Jamaica Civil Service Association Departmental Rep for the Ministry of Finance and the Public Service. I've been the rep for the past 18 years. Mm -hmm. And as it relates to representation, I carry the news of the Jamaica Civil Service Association to all the members of the Ministry of Finance. I keep them updated on happenings, developments, negotiation, and things like that. And all the benefits that the union has negotiated for them, I keep them abreast with all of those news. The JCSA is 100 years old now, correct? Definitely. All right. For how long has the JCSA had representation in the Ministry of Finance? Okay. Well, you know, the Ministry of Finance is the only agency that is recognized by the, con the, the Constitution. Yes. And the Ministry of Finance has been represented by the JCSA for a number of years now. And it has been given good representation because before me as a representative, we had a number of other good mm -hmm. JCSA representatives, which has been imparting the news of the union to mm -hmm. the workers. Mm -hmm. All right. Give, me, give us an idea of the the day-to-day -day issues. You speak about, you know, representing the views and taking news from of the JCSA and keeping the workers updated. But daily, what it is that you do to keep that link between what the JCSA does and the views of the workers, the, the welfare of the workers at the finance ministry then? Okay, well, you know, as with the public sector, the Ministry of Finance, you know, have the same views as a number of other public sector agencies. They have their concern re wages, they have their concern re working condition, they have their concern re benefits and pension matters. So those are the matters that the Ministry of Finance staff has as concern. I will take the information as it relates to them from the union. I will look at it, look what can be divulged to the workers tell them in a way that they can accept and understand because the JCSA represent different class of workers yes. within the Ministry of Finance. So we represent gardeners, drivers, attendants, right up to managers, senior managers, supervisors, directors. So, you know, I share the news with them. Different aspects might be affecting different class of persons. So I carry that news from the union to the different persons in the Ministry of Finance. And I keep regular meeting, keeping them abreast of the different things that might be affected them on a day-to-day -day basis. Got you on that. Recently, there was the small matter of the election for executive positions at Cricket West Indies, Dave Cameron losing to Ricky Skerritt. In the lead-up to that election, Arrington, there was talk that the relationship between the West Indies Players Association President Wavell Hines and Dave Cameron as Cricket West Indies boss was too close. And men, many people felt that, look, if you're a trade union or a bargaining unit representing workers, in this case, in that case, the players. You should not have a good and a close relationship with your employer, so to speak. There should be a natural bit of agitation in that relationship so that the players' interests are always best represented and that they are not bought out by management, so to speak. I say that and give you that example to ask if the working relationship between the JCSA and the Ministry of Finance, asking you to describe it and how healthy that relation has been over the years. Well, I don't totally agree with, you know, that you shouldn't be close with your directors, your our financial secretary. All those persons are important in the landscape of the union. And as you know, the union and the landscape now has changed a lot. So I think we should have a close relationship because 
when you have a close relationship with your senior manager and then your managers, you show them what is going on in the union, you show them the benefit that can be accrued over negotiation, you show them what the union is doing and what the union intends to do, they understand it. So I think you should have a good relationship with your managers, supervisors, directors as all, at all times as a union representative because they are the persons that can make the real changes in the Ministry of Finance. So you have to keep that close link with them at all times. There was a time when I would hear from certain persons who were union members in the event of a problem with their employer that, look, I pay my union dues, so I expect my union to go down there and make noise. But some people say, well, why make noise when you can have a simple dialogue, when you ha can have a, a conversation without rank or without hostility? Is it that the expectations of your members of the JCSA are that you will always go down to the finance ministry and make up a lot of noise in the event of a problem, or do they expect you to negotiate and do things quietly? Well, you know, some persons will be of the view that you must be, you know, angry and agitated in negotiation. But having, as you know, even in your personal relationship, when you are having a relationship and you have a negotiation, nothing is usually solved in an angry, hostile way. The best place to do negotiation is in a cordial manner where both sides know exactly what they want because negotiation is give and take and compromise. So at the Ministry of Finance and so the management and the Ministry of Finance maybe have one objective the union have one. We have to find a middle ground because a middle ground is always best for benefits for both sides. Yeah, if, if, you lose, if you use the relationship between the JCSA and the Ministry of Finance as an example, would you say that the JCSA has a, re, a, has a reputation of one of the more reasonable bargaining units, one of, those, one of those representational bodies then that you don't associate noise and hostility and anger with, but with you, you more associate them with being reasonable, with being level-headed, with being fair. Do you say that that's your reputation? Well, you are definitely right in everything that you have just said. Under the leadership of our president, Mr. O'Neill Grant, a lot of unions out there will make a lot of noise and agitation. But if you look at the benefit that has accrued to different unions, different bargaining groups, they don't get more than us in terms of salary. Most of the time, they don't get more than us in terms of benefits. So the Jamaica Civil Service Association has done a wonderful job over the years in getting benefits for their group. And the other groups has done a wonderful job too, but they are not getting more than us, even with a hostile quarrel atmosphere that they carry out. If you look at the typical relationship regarding negotiations for improved benefits for the members at the Ministry of Finance, and I'm speaking directly now in your role as the department rep, would you say that the Ministry of Finance's negotiation style over the years has been to take you to the brink, to string you along, to carry you as far as possible, and then concede, then look to reach an agreement? Or do you get the sense in those negotiations that they're trying to reach an agreement from the very outset of those negotiations? Well, you know, negotiation is give and take, as I said earlier. The Ministry of Finance has certain objectives. Remember that the Ministry of Finance has been, and the government of Jamaica basically has been under an IMF agreement for the last about six, seven years. That IMF agreement dictated certain things that the Ministry of Finance had to adhere to. And in adhering to those things, we can see the benefit now that has accrued to Jamaica. We are moving from 145% wages to GDP to under 95, which is a wonderful benefit. The Ministry of Finance can give back $14 billion to the Jamaican economy, and that is through the good negotiation that the Ministry of Finance and its staff and the union has done. So all those things accrue through the negotiating style of the Jamaica Civil Service Association and the cordial relationship with the Ministry of Finance negotiating team. Arrington, the Oliver Twist question emerges once again, and that question is the question of always wanting more, you know, just a little more. You speak of the the wage to the GDP ratio, the positive movement in that regard from 140 plus to no 90 plus, and also the fact that of the tax give back. Is there, you believe though, despite the good relationship you paint working with the Ministry of Finance, that there is still room, you believe, for them to give your members a little bit more, maybe some more key concessions, maybe a little bump up in some of the benefits that are, that are available to members so far? Do you think there is that space to do a little bit more than is being offered presently? Well, definitely. But as you know, the fiscal space is very, very tight. But 
the Ministry of Finance, in good faith, has always negotiated with the Jamaica Civil Service Association. There's always space to, to, to do more, but in doing more, we still have to be cognizant that we are growing slowly. The growth, I believe, coming out now is about 2.5%. So we need to grow and we need to, to think about country a lot of time about self. Do you find that you, as the department rep, it is that you are going to the members at the Ministry of Finance and informing them of the the economic situation, the financial situation even, and then getting them to buy into the approach you want to take to negotiations? Or do you find that members themselves are so much more informed than they would have been in past years when the only time they would know something is when the union rep tells them? Do you, are you dealing with people who are more informed, making themselves more informed about the situation so that they can frame the negotiations through you, their representatives, in a better way? Well, yes, yeah, definitely, because before we go to a negotiation, I always keep two meetings with the Ministry of Finance staff to hear what they want, tell them a lot of time what's on the table, and ask them how it fit in with what they want. They fully understand the climate that we are, we are living in. We, in every negotiation, you always want more. But it makes no sense that you want more and get more to the detriment of the, of the country. So you have to keep a balance. It's better we have a slice of bread and everybody can share more than one person have an entire bread and nobody else have. So that's the view I take. And the Ministry of Finance staff is fully cognizant that, you know, the economic climate is tight. The country is doing much, much better now, but we have to be careful, especially during this period. So if it is that, as you agree, your members are more informed about the realities around them and the realities facing the government that they are in partnership with, 20 years from now, Arlington, do you still see the need for a JCSA, given that members are so much more informed, information is available to everybody, they can speak to their, their, their employers themselves, is there still need for an intermediary, a mediator, the role that the JCS, JCSA has played for so long? Well, definitely, and I'd put it from 20 years to 100 years, because you know, as I said, we are celebrating 100 years today. Yes. 100 years down the road, because the union don't only negotiate for salaries, we negotiate for benefit, we negotiation also span educational activities. So the union will always be there. We deal with grievances. So the Jamaica Civil Service Association will always be needed, just like how it was needed 100 years ago, it will be needed 100 years into the future. Yeah. As we wrap, Alvington, the JCSA in that 100 years, pinpoint for me the most important benefit that the JCSA has provided, not just to its members at the Ministry of Finance, but right through the civil service. What would you say that that major benefit is? Okay, and I would liken the Jamaica Civil Service Association and its you know, advocacy to Mother Teresa and what she did in India to Mahatma Gandhi and what he did in India, to Dr. Martin Luther King and what he did for the blacks in the United States. The most important benefit I think the Jamaica Civil Service Association has negotiated is the educational benefits because through education, you can make yourself better. Through education, you can make yourself much, much more in a position to make others better. Mm -hmm. And through education, you can earn much more than you can get through a salary negotiation. So I think the educational benefit and the negotiations around that and the training benefits is the best benefit that the union has negotiated. So Alrington Roberts, the JCSA has 100 runs on the board. Going for another century, you're soon going to put up your foot. No, man, we are going for another century and we intend to pay no loose stroke in this century going forward. Excellent. Well played, sir. Arlington Roberts, JCSA, 100 years strong. And he's the man working for the JCSA at the Ministry of Finance and the Public Service. He says that relationship is healthy. That was Let's Talk Finance, brought to you by the Ministry of Finance and the Public Service.